Hi friends, at the time of recording this video, markets are extremely volatile. There are days when the Sensex will tank by almost 500 points and then there are days when Sensex has made some good recovery and some momentum. Overall, the market seems very volatile and uncertain, but in such volatile times, in my view, we need to focus on large cap space because large cap stocks provides a lot of stability to our portfolio. So in this video, I'll give you commentary on five very, very popular large cap stocks. These are not buy or sell recommendations. This is just my point of of view which will give you crucial information which will help you to make some good investing decision with that let's get this video started so the first stock is bajaj finance limited very very interesting data point is that in the last one year bajaj finance has given minus 15 percent returns compare this with nifty 50 because bajaj finance is a part of nifty 50 nifty 50 has soared by almost 25 percent in last one year now you may think that rahul this might be because of the fundamentals of bajaj finance has not been very very good in the last one year but that's not the case have a look at my screen you will see that sales growth has been around 31 percent in trailing 12 month Compounded profit growth has been around 21% in trailing 12 months, but the stock has been down by almost 15%. One might argue that it might be because of the valuations of Bajaj Finance. And for that, have a look at this chart and you will see that the PE ratio, the median PE ratio in the last five years for this stock has been 42 in fact. And right now the stock is trading at around 28 to 29 PE. In fact, it has gone back to almost COVID level PE ratio. Some of you might want to focus on the PB ratio because this is a NBFC stock. So in case of PB ratio, also so last five years median PB has been 8.6 right now the stock is trading at around COVID level PB ratio between five or six so why is it that the Bajaj finance has not performed in the last one year I'll give you three reasons from my analysis perspective reason number one is that between November 2023 and May 2024 two of their lending products were banned by RBI and this definitely had caused some sentimental pressure on Bajaj Finance. Now these two products are up and running in the market but the six months period that we saw that these two products were banned from the market. To be honest this looks to me a short term pain that happened it is not going to withstand in the coming quarters and months. Moving on to the second reason that I can see is that Geo Finance has been growing its arms and legs and there has been a pressure on Bajaj Finance on the growth aspect of Geo Finance and there has been narrative in the market that because Geo Finance has come into market, maybe this is the time to re-rate Bajaj Finance. Again, this could very well be a long term pressure point for stocks like Bajaj Finance. And the third reason that I see is that in the last 12 months, the cost of funds for Bajaj Finance has been under huge pressure. It has gone up to 7.94% in the Q1. The Q2 results are not yet out. But the management thinks that it is going to peak in the month of September and then after that it will move sideways. And then comes very very important update that when the rate cut cycle comes in, this is where their cost of funds is likely to come down. Because if the cost of funds is very high then what happens is the profitability. As you can see here, the NIM net interest margin comes under huge pressure and that's exactly what has happened in the case of Bajaj Finance. Okay Rahul, so what's the outlook of Bajaj Finance? So there are two driving factors right now that I see in Bajaj Finance. Number one is the RBI repo rate cut cycle and that is likely to begin somewhere in the December as per the estimates. Again, this is not confirmed. So in my view, when the rate cycle cut starts, Bajaj Finance is likely to see some benefits out of it. And point number two is on 22nd of October, Bajaj Finance Q2 results are likely to come out. And at that time, what happens to the cost of funds or the name will really drive where the stock is moving from this time onwards. Now, I can't really give you buy or sell recommendation, but what I can see here right now is that the stock is trading at around 6899 level at the time of recording this video. And I can see a strong support at 6428 level. So what happens if the stock comes down to that level, then that is almost six to 7% of drop. But what happens if the stock goes back up to its previous high, which is around 8100 level, which is an upside of around 18%. So this is the range that the stock might move depending on when the rate cuts happen and how their Q2 results are. If you like this analysis, hit the like button while I move to stock number two, which is Avenue Supermarkets Limited, which is DMART. Have a look at my screen. Very, very interesting price movements here that right now in the last five to seven trading session, the stock has crashed by almost 25%. In the last five months, stock gained around 32% and in just five to seven trading sessions, the stock has lost all its gains. 
and in fact it has gone back to june 2023 high levels of 4100 levels now after this correction if you look at avenue supermarkets p you will see that it is at 100 and you might say that this is a very very high valuation why would anybody buy this stock at this level but please understand that if you look at the five years p ratio of the stock median p has been around 123 so the stock has traditionally been trading at a very very high p in fact now it has come down to below median p if you look at the median PB of this stock in the last five years, the median PB has been around 18. Right now, the stock is trading somewhere between around 13 or 14. So it is come down to the median PB ratios as well. So I don't think the high PE and high PB ratio sort of a commentary really sticks well here. What is the reason? So I wrote a detailed post on my YouTube member community the day the stock started to fall, right? So that we understand the right reasons. And if you look at the core reason behind this fall is in their Q2 results. So if you look at these Q2 results in my screen, you will see that there's nothing wrong in these Q2 results. The revenue has gone up by around 40.2%. The PAT has gone up by around 7.9% year on year basis. They have added six stores. So all in all, the revenue and profit have grown in Q2. Now the key problem in their Q2 results is this statement that you see that in Q2 the like for like revenue growth for stores that are older than two years that growth has come down to 5.5 percent prior to that it used to be around 7.4 percent. So what does it tell you that their older stocks which are older than two years they have started to slow down in terms of the growth and this is never a good sign for a retail business. So what is the outlook of this stock? Let me give you the outlook of this stock. But if you want to receive such insights or updates almost on a daily basis, then you can become a member of my YouTube member community. You're going to learn a lot on a practical basis because I post in-depth analysis of stocks, mutual funds and various other assets which will help you improve your investing game. Simply go to my channel, press on join button and be my guest. The feedback from the community member has been excellent in the last 12 months. Now coming back to the outlook of this stock, in my view, this is not a long term stock. At least I'm not considering this is a long term stock mainly because the quick commerce business is eating into the market share of companies like DMART. It doesn't mean that DMART is going to close down or it is not going to grow. It is going to grow but the growth is going to be slower than what is expected mainly because the quick commerce companies are trying to deliver what DMART is not able to deliver. Right now please also understand that DMART does not have any plans to enter into quick commerce business. So having said that, I don't think this is a long term stock for me, but this stock can definitely present some short term swing opportunities because if I look at the levels here, there's a very, very strong support at 3600 level. So the stock might consolidate between 4100 to 3600 level and might present some swing opportunities in my view. Again, not a stock recommendation. Please do some research at your end. This analysis may help you make some good decisions. With that, let's move to stock number three, which is Bajaj Auto Limited. Have a look at my screen and you will see that today at the time of recording this video Bajaj Auto Limited cracked by almost 13%. So in the last four to five trading sessions, if you look at the stock, it has come down from high levels of 12,800 level to almost now 10,100 level, a decline of almost 21% within a matter of few days. Now, again, before you go and hurry to buy this stock, please understand the context behind this stock's last one year price appreciation. So have a look at my screen. You will see that in the last 12 months, the stock has rallied by almost 150%. So this is only a correction of 20 to 25%. Understand that in this context. So why this correction? Because of the Q2 numbers that came out. Although the Q2 revenue was highest ever quarterly revenue, but because of just one sentence that their executive director made that in the next October to November festive season, they are not expecting sales more than one to two percent while the market might be expecting at a rate of five to six percent and that's where when you get the outlook given by the executive director this is where the fear has taken over and the stock has fallen by around 13 percent people have booked the profits not only Bajaj Auto, because of this one statement, many other quality stocks, today, for example, Hero Moto Corp fell by around 3.61%. So overall, there has been a massive correction in the auto sector today. So what is my outlook on this stock? If I look at my screen, you will see that from a valuation perspective, last five years, median PE has been around 20, but the stock is trading at around 44 to 45. So in my view, it is still highly overvalued. If I look at the PB ratio of the stock in the last five years, the median PB has been 4.1. The stock is trading well above 10 PB ratio right now. But it doesn't mean that the stock will not give us opportunity to make some money. In my view, definitely it will give. So if I give you one more crucial information about this stock that in the month of March 2024, Bajaj Auto Limited did a buyback. 
what was the price of the buyback at that time the price was set by the company as 10000 rupees per share but please understand all the buybacks that the company generally executes they are given at premium and when this buyback was announced at the end of february or early march the stock was trading at around 8000 level 8200 level something like that so in my view that is the level that we need to consider right now also if you look at technical chart here you will see that there is a strong support at 9300 level and the second level of support i see is at 8700 level again i have given you a lot of details about this stock i am not saying either ways you should buy or sell this stock but this information may help you make some good investing decisions so far if you are liking this video hit the like button and let me know in the comments a simple thank you it will motivate me to come up with such content for you at zero cost with that let's move to stock number 4 and that is reliance industries limited and the reason i have included this stock is there is a bonus announcement by the company so before 28th of october if you hold let's say 10 reliance stocks you are going to get 10 additional bonus stocks in your demat account now a lot of people may think that because you are getting a free share bonus share let's go and buy reliance stocks but please do not make that mistake you only should buy reliance stock if you believe in the business of reliance stock because what is likely to happen is that the price that you see right now will get automatically adjusted after the record date so if the price is right now 2700 level it will come down to almost 1300 1350 level at that sort of a level because the bonus share doesn't mean that the price will remain still the same your total investment value will almost remain the same so what is the outlook of reliance industries let me give you one minute commentary if i look at the technical chart the stock is crashed by almost 15 percent this being a large cap stock 15 percent correction is a lot of correction a lot of damage has already happened here and the key reason for this correction is that their q2 results have not been very very good in fact from the last three quarters their profits have been declining if you compare them this year versus the previous year so year on year basis their profits have declined for the last three quarters that is why the stock has been under pressure but in my view a lot of damage has happened already and if i look at some of the good analysts what they are saying hdfc securities they have a ad rating again these are not my ratings they are out there in the internet namura has a buy rating target of 3400 if you look at clsa they also have a outperform rating ubs has a buy rating it's only jp morgan that has overweight rating on reliance stock but majority of the analysts right now have buy rating on reliance industries not my data not a recommendation but i have presented you some data in a very very factual manner with that let's move to stock number 5 which is tata consultancy services limited tcs and if you look at my screen you will see that the stock has corrected by almost 10% from its high levels of 4500 in fact 4600 level to almost 4100 level at the time of recording this video in my view this is a very very good correction in this particular stock but more importantly the key reason for this stock correction is that their q2 results have not really impressed the market and if you look at the data here the revenues have grown by around 6.4% in my view that's not a bad growth given the scale of tcs but overall these results have not really impressed the market but in my view the more important data that we need to look at is this data which is a market wise breakdown and you will see that the north american market has still not recovered fully in fact it is down by around 2.1% from a year on year basis and this is where the main pressure point for tcs is so the natural question here is that rahul when is north american business segment is going to grow for tcs it largely depends on the us fed's repo rate cut decisions that of course i do not know but it is likely that 2025 and 2026 is going to be a better year for companies like tcs because the fed rate cut cycle has just started recently the fed has cut the repo rate by 0.50 50 basis point and it is likelihood that there might be two additional rate cuts before 2024 closes but definitely in 2025 there is likely to be more rate cuts and these rate cuts will definitely help companies like tcs again i'm not saying that you go and buy tcs but i have presented to you an analysis in terms of what might drive tcs's business which is coming from north america if you look at the valuation of tcs right now five year median pe has been around 31 right now the stock is trading at around 30 which in my view is fairly valued if you look at the pb ratio last five years it has been around 13.2 the stock is almost trading at around 14 14.5 and hypothetically the stock might consolidate from here on and i can see a strong support at 3800 level in my view whenever the stock comes to those levels they might be really really good buy on dip opportunities not a stock recommendation per se but in my view stocks like tcs stock like infosys they might compound 
at a nifty 50 level and these are still quality stocks in terms of the stability in your portfolio again not a stock recommendation that you go and buy TCS my point is that you need to understand what is going to drive the behavior of the business in the next 12 to 24 months so in this video I have covered five stocks and you will recognize a pattern or a theme that all these five stocks has shown some sort of correction in their stocks and that is where I say that never buy a stock at all time high level wait for some corrections and if you are convinced that these corrections are only short term pressures you might want to buy on dip again not a recommendation for you to buy but this analysis may help you make some good investing decisions with that I hope to see you in my next video until then keep rocking.